Good morning to you all. First of all, I would like to thank Dr. Yaki Dayan and the organizers of the conference for inviting me to speak at the conference. I see a great value in the conference as a platform for initiating discussions and building cooperations between the various parties uh, on the education continuum. How do I push the slides? Can somebody help me with it? Zaz, okay, sorry. I would like to start by a short and quick question. By raise of hands, how many of you think that current academic institute will be irrelevant in the future? Hmm. Part of us are shy, but part of us are not very optimistic. I'm raising this question because in a recent survey performed by the AACU, American Association of Colleges and Universities, for only 48% of the general public in the U.S. thinks today that an academic degree has a value. I'm on the other side very optimistic about the future of higher education because I see in practice, the change that we are doing at FEC and, and give me confidence. Secondly, I fully understand that like in any other disruptive market, other, either in, in, inside forces will do the change or external threat will make the change. I'm quite confident that during the next year, we'll see a major change in the uh, academic uh, institute. In my talk, I'll talk about academic engineering education, uh, but I think that what I'm talking about, the questions and the thesis that I'm putting on the table, is relevant to any education system. I would like to focus on three main items in my talk. One is why is there a need in a change in engineering education in the academia, and it's definitely relevant to the discussion talk between Mani, uh, Mano and Yeriv. Second, what are the options of making a stage, a, a change? What is going on on a global basis? And to summarize by several points of the change that we are doing in Africa. So I'll start by the, why should we make a change? We are all facing exponential technology changing, changes. Every aspect of our life are changing. The world is completely changing in all domains. And a specific domain is the job market, which is relative to us. The value of the soft skills in the job market is increasing. It was mentioned yesterday by Aaron Aaron that uh, more than half of the jobs in the market will be uh, changing or completely uh, vanishing. Two-thirds of the pupils at schools will work on jobs that we cannot even define them and that immediately raised the question, what is the current role of academia and the education system? But referring to engineering education, the industry in the US and in Israel in the last years is stressing for the need of soft skills. Personally, I don't like the term soft skills. It's too soft. I call them vital skills. In a recent survey that we have done at AFECA a few months ago, among more than 100 Israeli high-tech companies, asking them what are the skills that you would expect for a graduate engineer from the academia, you can see that multidisciplinary teamwork is number one. Effective communication skills for many years was uh, leading the list. The period that engineers used to develop mathematical equation alone by themselves at a corner has passed. The teamwork, the multidisciplinarity, and other skills are definitely required and vital in order to succeed in the industry. Another aspect that we should take care, should look at, is the profile of the current student. We call them the generation now because we are not keeping track of the, the letters Y, Z. Uh, generation now. So they are technology oriented. They are multitasking in nature, but they put a great value on everything they, uh, they do. 
So what we are stating, what I'm saying, and it, uh, it is the basis for the strategy of the FECA, engineering education is a system where the input has changed, the input, the candidate students that are coming, it's a completely different profile. The required output by the industry has changed, so it's impossible that the process would remain the same. We will definitely become irrelevant. So it's exponential times, and you know I'm coming from the high-tech industry, and I'm for a few years now in the academia, and all my colleagues are telling me, disruptive technologies and changes are for the industry, for the high-tech, it's not for the academia. The academia didn't change for 1,000 years. The academy is going to change. It doesn't have any other options. Otherwise, it will definitely become uh, uh, irrelevant. So otherwise, we will become irrelevant. So this is with regard to the why. How to do it? Let's start by a global view. In a recent survey, an amazing recent survey, done by the, done by the School of Engineering at MIT. MIT is considered for many years the global leader in engineering education. In a recent survey done by MIT, the 10 leading emerging education engineering institute has been defined. Several amazing facts with that list. For the first time, MIT is not among the list. It's not, it's not ranked one of the top 10 by a report done by MIT, yeah? And who are the leaders? All in college from Boston, SUTD from Singapore. What is common to both of them? Small Institute has been recently established. SUTD has been established 10 years ago. All in College have been established 20 years ago. Not very a large a academic institute. All in is 400 students and SUTD is 1,500. They are planning to grow to 3,000. But the main issue with this institute is the education philosophy, which I try to summarize in one sentence. The target is to develop skills, not only transfer knowledge, using multidisciplinary project-based learning, not lectures in class in which students and lecturer are falling asleep after 10 minutes and is definitely not appropriate, and active learning with an emphasis on student engagement, and I connect definitely to what I've said previously. If you want to be excellent, you need to have energy and curiosity. If I want to educate excellent engineers, I must develop curiosity, motivation, and joy of learning. Otherwise, it will all be a, process, a technical uh, process. What with other institutes globally? This is not a report. This is my view of discussion with many institutes around the globe in Israel. Part of the academic institute said, it's not our problem. We give knowledge, skills in the industry. And other part of the institute, other part, portions of the institute says, okay, we agree that they need it in the industry, we are going to pay to, to fulfill our role to society and do something. So I'm calling it a single modality approach. It's okay, it's a step forward in the right direction, but I think when you have a disruption in the market, time is of essence. So the solution can be, let's work with the industry on an agreed program in which the students are working in industry as part of the education process. Or MIT and Harvard, which we visited a few months ago, said we agree we need to give soft skills, but tradition of 400 years doesn't enable us to make changes in the curriculum. So we develop extracurriculum activity around the curriculum or enter in-class project-based learning or make some changes to the curriculum. This is the variety of the solutions that I've been facing globally. So these are the possibilities to make a change. I'll conclude by describing what we are doing in Afeka. I strongly believe that when you have a disruptive uh, uh, either technology or a change, you must act fast. And I must admit, I'm a little weird. I'm coming from the high-tech industry. I was a CEO 
I don't have time for changes that will take 20 or 30 years. So we, we passed the next uh, process. At first, we decided as a management that we want to train engineers according to industry needs. That was a major decision. Secondly, we entered into a discussion that took about one year to define the output engineer of our college. This is quite unique in a sense, because normally uh, uh, education programs at the academia are defined by the process itself, the curricular, the faculty, the student. We added another point. We defined the output. I don't want to go over all details. That's a, a year of discussions of all our academic management. The ultimate engineer graduate of FECA would have a deep scientific knowledge, engineering knowledge, personal skills, engineering skills, languages, value, and broad knowledge. That's our dream. And as we completed finishing this, we got to the conclusion that we must convert from training engineers to educating engineers. So it's about three years ago that we definitely see ourselves as an academic institute that is doing education. Any process that delivers knowledge, skills, and ethics is definitely doing education. And then we moved on an operational level, as opposed to what I described earlier as a one path, we are operating five paths of activities in parallel, and I'll give a word about each one of them. First of all, we are, the, we are completely changing the curriculum. Each one of the courses is expected to have learning outcomes on knowledge and skill level that take the student an incremental step towards the uh, final profile that we have defined. It will result by a map that the student is entering the, the first day and, uh, uh, and getting output at the last day, passing all the knowledge and a lot of emphasis on skills. Extracurricular activity, when we started it two years ago, everybody told me students will not come. If they are not getting credits, they are not coming. But this is completely opposite to what we think. We want to open curiosity and motivation. And today, two years later, we have dozens of clubs, hundreds of students, no credit. They are coming at their free time and doing whatever they want to do. Clubs of robotic, uh, computer vision, a long list. Student-led extracurricular activity. Innovative pedagogy, open call every year, all faculty, whatever you need, you want to do, we are going to support you. Project-based learning, flipped classes, I don't believe much in engineering and online, I must admit, but blended is okay. A long list of whatever the faculty wants to do, we are supporting them. This is an example of a course. Instead of a lecture a week, re renewable energies course at the south for a week at the kibbutz, uh, sleeping there, eating there the whole week with uh, uh, the faculty analyzing in-field renewable energies. It's impossible to do it without changing the physical layer of the campus. Uh, innovative learning spaces and classes uh, are uh, entered into FECA. We didn't complete it. It will cost a lot of money, but every summer we have another uh, increment in it. That's how looks the open space uh, learning environment uh, in the library. And because of the skills gap be between the academia and the industry, we believe in strong ties in the industry. It's, it's easy for us because we have many people that are coming from the industry. All of this relies on a supporting uh, a culture that encourage change, drive for excellence, but in cases we have a failure, it's okay. Just to summarize by a picture, Friday morning, our student, free time, doing a project for kids uh, with handicaps that cannot drive cars, and our students are adapting the cars to support their capability, okay? At the end of the day, 10 kids went out, each one of a car, with its own car compatible to its needs. That is an example of a teamwork, 
faculty and student energy, social engagement, and the values that we believe. Thank you very much for your attention.